games. Um, Vince. Oh wow! They're is, just going right in oh, here. <laughs> okay. so Vince has the, is running a Zamazenta team, and Josh is running a Choice Specs Terrapagos. Now, in this, we have here today a pretty standard lead from Joshua with the Zamazenta and Pal. That is one of the most threatening leads that the Zamazenta team can well, exactly, go with. Exactly. Yeah. It is one of the most explosive T uh, stars. As wow, like, like that, like you see right there, that super effective hit, the body press, the defense boost, just such a strong touch start. Yes, indeed. I uh, So you might be wondering, the is it doesn't the sort of sort of ruin Champao's ability lower Zamazenta's defense, lowering uh, Zamazenta's body press damage? But that is not how that works. Um, the mechanics of this are a little unintuitive, but in fact, the sort of ruin does boost the body press damage, and that is partially why the Zamazenta Champ Pao Li is so threatening. Exactly. Like on paper, you'd think that it might have a counterintuitive effect, but no, it works together completely in sweet synchronicity. And now we're seeing the Terra Grass be committed on the Zamazenta. Yes, it's got using the Tailwind as well. Yes. Um, perhaps the Zamazenta that took the electric move the last turn and Vince, maybe seeing that amount of damage come to the restricted, uh, may not want to accept more uh, additional damage from that. Uh, it is a relatively safe Terra uh, because, you know, um, it is naturally a steel type, meaning that Draco Meteor uh, is not a particularly appetizing choice to go into uh, the Zamazenta. So now, yep, now Vince switches out, uh, calling the Draco Meteor, so that in the following turn, uh, the Raging Bolt will be left at minus two, meaning that the Zamazenta can come back in and essentially just wall out this Raging Bolt. Yeah, beautiful play there, very defensive play, getting that attack lowering as well with the Intimidate. The Moonblast is gonna go towards the Gen Pao, blocked out by the Protect. Yes, now the Draco Meteor goes into the Incineroar, hopefully. Now, then, Incineroar takes a decent amount of damage from this Draco Meteor. However, Incineroar, as a Pokemon, doesn't care too much about the damage that it takes, so long as that it can reposition uh, the board in a favorable way at thereafter. Exactly, it's a much more supportive Mon, the buffer debuffer. It's still able to deal out a decent amount of damage as well, and put out that fake out pressure is massive, but gets blocked out by the Protect Winds of Cotton. Gonna hang on for a few more rounds. Thunderclap does go out and takes out the Chen Pao. Yeah, so there's a bit of an interesting interaction there, right? Uh, of course, Chen Pao could go for Sucker Punch into um, the Raging Bolt to try to call the Thunderclap because uh, Chen Pao moves first. The Raging Bolt uh, Thunderclap there would have failed uh, had Vince gone for the Sucker Punch, but the fact that the Thunder Thunderclap move before Champau is evidence that the Vince uh, went for a spinner in that situation. You want to get the confirmed hit in there, but just failed to warn that the Thunderclap would take him out in a speedy way. Now both players locking in right here. So to see how this turn will turn out. So, oh, a switch out with the Incineroar. Mm -hmm. Since the Raging Bolt on Joshua's side is already at minus two, having gone for the Draco Meteor in the previous turn, this Zamazenta is sitting very pretty, is not being threatened much, uh, and is ready to start body pressing and try to clear out the board. Of course, it takes the Snarl, but being a physical attacker and a unique physical attacker, one which attacks from using the physical defense, the Snarl is not going to do much. Wow. Wimscott just barely hanging on after that Snarl came in clutch. Might have There's one more setup one. of Tailwind, which could be massive later on. Potentially, or uh, could uh, go for an Encore, potentially, to lock out uh, either of these, or the Raging Bolt into an attack that uh, may not be, well, that could set it up uh, to which Joshua uh, will have a, an advantageous position following. But just goes for the Tailwind, uh, says, hey, I have a Terrapagos in the back, uh, just ready to roll. So there goes the Draco Meter, but Minus two, not gonna do too much damage there. 
Not too, too much with that body press. He's gonna do a little bit more with the snarl. Maybe confirm the kill, but no, I think that's a two HP. Just barely hanging on there. The Raging Bolt's still in this, but it's kind of dead weight at this point with how low it's been lowered. Yes. Uh Minus, minus three, I believe, at this point, and being the last Pokemon, uh, last two Pokemon, meaning that it can't switch out. It's, this is essentially a 2v1 situation for Vince. But now we're finally seeing that restricted Mon come into play. Vince has already revealed his hand while this Terrapogos is still just about to be unleashed. And but here it is. This Terra Star Storm needs to get some value here. Yes, uh, a key thing to note is that Vince's Zamacenta does not have Wide Guard, so this Stellar Terra, Terra Star Storm, is just going to hit both targets. There's very little that Vince can do to stop this. Yeah, does he have anything on his team that has Wide Guard? That's what I'm looking through. He has a Pelipper, which could be in the back pocket here, but that's going to be the case. There it is. And does decent damage with that Raging Bolt relatively unharmed. For the Snarl and hope that something can happen. Oh, uh, sorry. I apologize. It's going to be on Joshua's side to reduce damage from that Raging Bolt. Just trying to go for perhaps a critical hit, but does not get it. Yeah, fishing for those crits is always such a risk. And now, going for the Draco Meteor once again. You need to try and get any little bit of value you have left in this Raging Bolt before it goes back. Zama yes. Senta though, he's going to protect, double protect, did not go through. Thunderclap does go through and he wins that engagement, taking out the Raging Bolt. Yes, I think for Vince, the only real out that he had to potentially win this game was for enough double protects to happen, uh, such that the Tailwind runs out and the Zama Senta can outspeed and KO the Tropicos with body press, but not today as the odds of landing so many consecutive attacks, very low. Yeah, that's it. Now he's down to his last view Pokemon here. Both players are down to the last view, but now Incineroar is going to be coming back out. Ba Both Incineroars are going to be coming back out, proccing that Intimidate once again, but unfortunately, the main attacker on Joshua's team is a special attacker, going to be relatively unharmed by that. Now, this is very good uh, in the sense that Vince can stall out two turns of Tailwind here, right? First one's... Oh, um, I apologize. That was a graphical error. Um, yeah, the yeah. fake out, though, comes through, flinches him, survives just a little longer, able to last out the Tailwind. Uh, yes, but single target, Terra Star Storm. Yeah, Vince uh, concedes, and we're going on to game two. Yeah, props to Joshua for sticking out. That was a very exciting match. We went back and forth quite a few times here. And I think we might have to see this Pelipper come through in the next game. Yes, I agree. Uh, Terrapagos, and the, as well as the threat of the Golden Go, right? Although we didn't see it on the first game, um, Joshua could try to get the jump on potential adaptations on Vince's end. And... You know, the Golden Go is a very good Pokemon into Zamazenta traditionally, uh, seeing that especially this Zamazenta doesn't have wide guard, uh, and Golden Go is happy to just set up Nasty Plot uh, in front of it. Uh, means that perhaps Vince needs to strongly consider bringing the Pelipper, which does have the wide guard, uh, to prevent the late game Terrapagos from just sweeping through his team with Terra Star Storm. Exactly, you need something with wide guard in here. If this Amazenta had wide guard, it'd be absolutely perfect as I'm not seeing all too much use from the iron defense. I know it could set you up mm -hmm. for that absolute main sweeper there, but it's a big risk, it's a big gamble. You have to be in a perfect scenario for that to work off. But perhaps Vince could go for it. Uh, seeing, Looking at Joshua's team, if... Vince goes with something like Zamazenta Incineroar uh, rather than the offensive just start swinging right away Champao Zamazenta lead and just goes for a more uh, laid back, sit back and just click Iron Defense and start taking one shots on everything. Like that could be one way to, for Vince to adapt against what uh, Joshua brought. Exactly, there's a few ways to pivot here, a few ways to bring this team, but over on the side of Joshua, do you think he's going to change anything up on his team? 
Uh, I Perhaps, um, like I said, the Golden Go seems like a very strong Pokemon into Vince's team. Uh, it's just a matter of playing around the Pelipper, and I see the Raging Bolt also has Thunderbolt, so the Raging Bolt matches up wow. very well into the Pelipper. Yeah, especially with the rain up, that Thunderbolt going to be doing a lot of damage. Easy to land as well. Going to take that one right out of there. But now as we're loading into our second match, let's see this one. Oh, leading with the Annihilate with Zamazenta. The Annihilate, this Annihilate is Choice Scarf Annihilate, which, and importantly, is very interesting. It has both kind Final Gambit and Coaching. This and also got uh, an immediate attack boost, so it can also just start attacking with close combat potentially, uh, not even having to lose all of its health to take out something like the Incineroar uh, with the final gambit, or additionally, it could start just going for coaching, uh, boosting not only Amazenta's heavy slam, but also the iron defense after going for the protect. Just take the fake out, no, just say, oh. hey, this Zamazenta is not going to be taking any damage, and I'm just going to sit back and click coaching and try to run you over. And the Thunderclap failed as well. An absolutely there brilliant play by Vince. Yes, yeah, so now this is a very advantageous position for Vince. Uh, the Annihilate being Scarf is going to move faster than the Zamazenta, so this Zamazenta is ready to start potentially start swinging plus three defense boosted body press. And who, who knows how much damage is that, that's going to do to that Raging Bolt. And with no ghost types on the side of Joshua brought in here, nothing can really be immune to this body press. Yes. Perhaps this Whimsicott, if Vince goes for, say, something like a Iron Defense, uh, could be a very bad situation. Uh, could, could get Encored into a passive move like that and be forced to switch out, but no, the body press comes out, so the Encore Ooh. out has been closed off. And here, uh, you can go for Tailwind, but you see that Thunderbolt might, may or may not even be a three-hit KO from this range, and certainly not if the Zamazenta chooses to go for Grass Terrasalization. Yeah, and now this Zamazenta, a big threat on the field, not at one hit KO to potential on this Raging Bolt at least, so gonna have to try and stall out a little bit longer. Maybe take out the Whipsicott, get rid of that support potential. He has a few choices to make here. If Joshua didn't bring Golden Go, this body press is just going to shred through his team. He doesn't have anything that could be immune to it, doesn't have anything that could Potentially, well, the Windsor's Cock could choose to go for a Ghost Terra to try to take the Body Press and preserve Focus Sash. However, Vince can easily just go for a plus two Heavy Slam at this point. Exactly, he could just keep on uh, trucking through most of this team. Heavy the Slam, he has two good options. Is going and going, yeah. This, this Zamazenta now grass. Terrasalize just says, hey, like not not even a thunderclap critical hit is going to be able to stop this Zamazenta. But Joshua calls Ooh. it with the Draco Meteor. A very impressive play from Josh. Now Zamazenta very, very low and the speed is on Joshua's side. So unless this Zamazenta gets some sort of speed boost for the next turn, this is going to be a very dicey little while. Now very interesting choice to bring out the Terrapagos here right into the Pelipper. You might say, well, isn't this Pelipper just going to click White Guard and completely wall out this Terrapagos? Well, but considering it from Vince's perspective, this is very scary because this Terrapagos could very much just go for a Terra Star Storm without terrestrializing and become a single target move hitting through White Guard. Exactly, a lot of options on the side of Joshua. Brilliant play, gets protected out. But there's still just so much pressure coming out from Joshua. Zamazenta in a really tough position. Hurricane comes out though. That's gonna be a good clean hit in the rain, but does not KO, yeah, but so gets the confusion. The, the confusion is potentially very big here. The Now the Whimsicott can't just click Moonblast and have the Tropicos attack into the Pelipper going for the double KO anymore. You have to double into that slot with, you have to force, you, you're forced to hit into exactly. that Zamazenta and 
Very clever switch from Vince going into a ghost type. While Terrapagos is not st stellar Terra, the Terra Star Storm is only a normal move. Ooh, but that's gonna sting quite a bit there. Oh, but the Defiant, he gets the Defiant proc. Getting to plus two is potentially big from for Vince. Exactly, this Annihilate gonna have one big swing left in him. And this Pelipper still has some utility as well. It could set up quite a bit here. Or it could stay in here with the Protect and the Wide Guard. That now, Joshua can't commit that and Stellar type just yet. And the Ooh, and confusion now, goes the through! Confusion. <laughs> yes. You can tell the reaction from Vince, he's so happy about that. Yes, now the Terra Star Storm going into the Pelipper. The reason why you might not want to go for the KO onto the Annihilate by terrestrializing your Tropagos is because the white, the threat of White Guard. You could have very easily uh, seen a scenario where the Tropagos goes for a Stellar Terra uh, Star Storm and get completely walled out by the Pelipper. But now that threat is gone as the Pelipper has been removed from the field. It would Defiant not proc again off this Incineroar? It does. It is now at plus three. <laughs> <laughs> and with Gen Pao, the defenses of everybody are going to be so low. This is absolutely insane. <laughs> but at the same time, the time is of the essence. Joshua is on a clock. The Whimsicott went down, so the, there's no threat of a future Tailwind. So if this Tailwind runs out, this Champow and this Choice Scarf Annihilate is being very threatening, having, you know, being able to outspeed both Pokemon and threaten them with a fighting type move. They both have fighting type moves and they'll both Pokemon on Joshua's side are weak to fighting. But now, with the rain stopping, it is going to be the terrestrialized Terrapagos coming out here. The fake out comes through. Not gonna do all too much though, because one's a ghost and one has protect. Now, close combat coming through. Can it KO? And it does! It's super effective! And no, Stellar Starstorm comes through. And it's just down to Incineroar. This is a very safe play from Vince's side, right? You know that this Tropagos can't protect, and it's the only thing that is threatening damage at this point. So, seeing this, Joshua concedes, and we are going on to a game three. Yeah, wow, already going to a game three. These matches are moving so quickly. It's a game I can barely keep up. <laughs> exactly, it's so fast-paced, but it's so fun to watch as well. And now we're 1-1. One, one. We've seen most of the tricks these players can bring in here, aside for the one you highlighted earlier, golden that golden go. go. Yes, uh, the golden go. Importantly, a ghost type can switch into all of the fighting moves that the Tropagos gets threatened by, uh, such as the Annihilate Close Combat. You see the Annihilate, you think, oh, it's just going to uh, final gambit and remove itself from the play uh, immediately. You might think that, and or it could go for coaching like we saw, but we saw the potential of this <laughs> Annihilate to just completely spin out of control. And you see, you might think like, Zamazenta! Zamazenta's body press is going to... Yeah, Zamazenta is... Do uh, you, you think that's going to be the sweeper there? But that Annihilate with Defiant, it got procced on the Moonblast is what I think really put it over the edge. Yeah. And then forced to switch into the Incineroar once again, procced it once again. So many stacks of that, it just pretty much one-shot the Terrapagos after the ability was gone. Yeah, it's just... It's always good to have in uh, Terrapagos uh, matchup uh, multiple Pokemon that can outspeed Terrapagos and hit it with a fighting move. Terrapagos uh, is unable to defensively tear away its fighting weakness because the game locks you to that star stellar terrestrialization. So, you know, having Zamazenta with Body Press, the Champau with Sucker or Sacred Sword, and the Annihilate with Close Combat might perhaps Josh should could maybe consider getting early damage with the Tropagos and perhaps try to trade out the pieces in such a way that rather than winning solely through the use of the restrictive Pokemon, use a different piece to 
clean up the game. <laughs> yeah, it's a little hint there. Maybe go for the golden go here. Have another yes, thing to like rally to behind. Golden go. Let's, Let's see, see Anilip Shen Pao, another strong lead. Yes. And there oh, it is. is. the golden go. Now, this is very interesting because this Chan Pao can't actually, even though it is a dark type, cannot actually hit the Golden Go if the Golden Go simply chooses to go for a Nasty Plot. And while this Annihilate has Shadow Claw, do you really want to lock into Shadow Claw as a Choice Scarf for Annihilate? A lot of the value that an Annihilate has uh, using Choice Scarf is to be able to click Coaching, to be able to tr trade with uh, Final Gambit, or like we saw in the last game, sweep with Close Combat. Shadow Claw, by comparison, is relatively weak, and not only that, Terrapagos is immune to, sh to Shadow Claw. Yeah, and a beautiful first turn, getting this set up, waiting out, seeing what this Annihilate is going to do on the side of Vince. Shadow Claw comes through, like you said, but now locked to that. Joshua now has an idea of what he has to do. Ice Spinner, though, coming through on the Wimscot, and it brings it down to one, forcing the Sash. This is a good example of just a trade, a concession, saying, hey, Vince just says, hey, I know that you're going to probably protect and Tailwind, but if you do that, at least I break the Focus Sash, hit it down, hit the Whimsicott, and arrange that any attack can just pick it off and perhaps limit what Whimsicott <laughs> can go for in the future. A little bit of a cancel out there at the Sucker Punch Encore. Shadow Ball, though, coming out. Going to do a lot to Annihilate, but not enough to Ooh, knock it out. And no, he gets the Defiant Brook. Defiant with Horde of Ruin. I think this is just going to pick up the KO, and it does! Wow! Usually you're hoping for those stat drop chances, but now against an Annihilate, it's working against you. This is not what you wanted to see as Joshua here, perhaps. Now, you knew that the Annihilate was locked into Shadow Claw, and perhaps you could have swapped in the Tropagos, but the Champau does have Sacred Sword, and Maybe that was not a uh, risk that Josh wanted to take. But on the plus side, Josh still has the Tailwind and chooses to preserve the Whimsicott for Tailwind in the future and is basing uh, hopes to just sweep through with the Tropicos in Tailwind. And I think that is a very reasonable choice as the options for Joshua is very limited at this point now that the Golden Go has gone down. Yeah, very reasonable choice indeed. He has to try and sweep through. The protect's coming through. This Stellar Star Storm not going to get as much value as it should. Vince, knowing full well that he is in the driver's seat, he, ha he got so much out of this lead combination in that early game interaction that he, he thinks, okay, I can just sit back and protect, just scout out what Josh wants to do just in full and go from there. And now, Although we are even on Pokemon, Vince has a lot more initiative sending out the Pelipper oh, to wow. just lock out that Terrapagos, which is not what you want to see as Josh. It is weak to this Raging Bolt, though. He has some coverage, but I have a feeling a, a Terra type might come through for this Pelipper. Now, oh, importantly, this Pelipper does not have Focus Sash. So, although you can wide guard here, the, if the Raging Bolt just goes for the Thunderbolt into the Pelipper, it could just go down in one hit, and meaning that's only one turn of Wide Guard. Vince, I would imagine, probably wants more turns of Wide Guard and just keep the Terrapagos on the field so to force essentially a 1v1 scenario, a 1v1 scenario where it's Champau versus Raging Bolt and Champau being an Ice type, a physical attacking Ice type on, against their Assault Vest Raging Bolt. That's a very, very good matchup. That's a 1v1 matchup that I would certainly uh, uh, favor, but instead goes for the Thunderbolt. Wow! Oh, the Thunderbolt! The paralysis! <laughs> Champau came in and goes through oh, first turn! So devastating. The tailwind does peter out, but he still has that whimsic beacon. Because of that, because of that paralysis. Wow. Joshua could just go for a thunderbolt. This uh, in all honesty, depending on how fast this raging bolt is trained, because of that paralysis, Champau is at half speed. Pelipper still just forced to go for wide guard because this Parapagos, Should you let? Should you not? 
wide guard, this uh, uh, Tropicos is just going to run you over. Exactly. Now this is pretty much a singles match at this point. It is. There's a little bit of a deadlock between two of the Pokemon. One choice two specs. Of the stellar Teros or, or two of the Terrasalized Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <a> very classic <laughs> Pokemon. Just 1v1, Ooh. no Terrasalization, but the Zamazenta comes in, and because it hasn't switched out, uh, it has the defense boost, so it is still threatening a lot of damage onto this Raging Bullet, probably picking up the two-hit KO with Body Press. Yeah, this is looking at very interesting here. This Pelipper just forced a wide guard here. It's go either going to go through one time or no, we're going to keep Pelipper, having this singles match the going hero on. Hero just saving Vince's team from getting swept by this Tropagos. And the body press does a huge amount of damage, easily going to pick up the 2 hit KO in this following turn. So should Josh not be able to repeat that the paralysis in, again onto this Zamazenta, this is looking rather dire. Yeah, and it does not go through. See Josh checking to see, hey, is there anything that can switch into this body press and potentially win me this game? But it's it's just the Whimsicott at one HP on that turn one when Vince conceded the Tailwind in exchange for uh, Whimsicott's uh, health here, really coming into play here, but a very clever switch in from Joshua when the focus is just on the Zamazenta versus Raging Bull and you see this Tropicos just sitting there doing absolutely nothing well it's actually pretty difficult to just go for the attack into the Whimsicott so the Whimsicott actually despite being only at 1 HP gets a free switch in and, and also this wide guard now failing is now going to have less value going forward it's going to be harder to use going forward because of the number of times the Vince went for wide guard Vince cannot go for protect on this Pelipper that's the success rate on this protect to potentially scout what this Tropagos is about to do uh, is probably in the, the single digits. And you see this Zamazenta protecting, just trying to scout what this uh, Tropicos wants to lock into the tail when it comes out. But wait, this is rather difficult if, if Earth this power goes and does not pick up the KO on this Whimsicott because the Whimsicott is threatening Encore. Yeah, and there it is. The Weather Ball takes out the Whimsicott, and now it's just this Terrapagus against the world here. It can be a little unintuitive in that situation where we have a restricted Pokemon, uh, Terastalize, just ready. Like you, you think that the restricted Pokemon is the biggest threat, but actually that Whimsicott at just one HP was the threat because of the threat <laughs> of Encore. If the Encore went into two non-attacking uh, moves like that would that was just game there yeah brilliant play and now earth power comes through the tailwinds up and to the move next. hurricane misses it misses no rain left this is looking good but wait he's locked in earth power. the terrestrialization yes. though it can hit now and now going to be forced to use the protect he's locked in earth power hide all you want these are gonna end up landing sooner or later sooner or later indeed i think for vince right you protect there just because you can maybe you can get into a position where you can timer stall but wow. oh, that does way too much damage vince has to hope that this hurricane lands and get the confusion oh. but it does not and the tail the tailwind peters out but does it even matter at this point the battle is canceled. Most likely very slow, so yes, Joshua does. In fact, despite despite that disastrous beginning early game, a losing Golden Go without doing any damage with it and losing the Focus Sash on the, the Whimsicott is able to claw it back through the use of, of clever board maneuvering. That 1 HP Whimsicott swapped out and then swapped in for free and was able to just take, just support the team to take it from there. Yeah, that was a brilliant play by Joshua. He's back up indeed. against the wall. Almost like a singles match happened. Yes. There he's like, wait, this is doubles. <laughs> this and is I very, have an extra yeah. Pokemon. I can swap out. And he just totally changed the board right there. But we got caught into it as well, right? Exactly. We thought, we thought that it was just going to be a 1v1 scenario where the Tropagos just clicks Tarot Star Storm and the Pelipper just clicks White Guard. But Joshua just correctly said, hey, like, I've 
I've conditioned you to think that this is just how the game's gonna go, and was able to just swap out the Terrapicos, swap in the, the Whimsicott when Vince wasn't expecting and wasn't covering for it. Yeah, it was an absolutely brilliant play by Joshua, thinking outside the box, keeping sure he knows where all his Pokemon are and knows all the moves at this is his disposal. And while we didn't see too much value from that Golden Go, I think the switch up was great to get his opponent in a different headspace there. And well, another underrated aspect of the Annihilate or the Golden Go is that the Annihilate was forced to be locked into Shadow Claw rather than a perhaps a more high value move like coaching or final gambit or the uh, close combat, right? The Shadow Claw is definitely a lot easier to play around. Uh, so even though the Golden Go didn't do anything in terms of damage, the it conditioned the board in such a way that Joshua was able to pick it up from there. Exactly, and that was an absolutely brilliant match, but we have even more brilliant matches on the way here, folks, so don't go anywhere. We're going to throw it to a quick break, and we'll be right back with more Pokemon action. <laughs> 